starting your journey to financial freedom. Now. Now. You are listening to the New Investor Podcast. This is the Young Investor for the New Investor Podcast, and it is day 88 on our journey towards financial freedom. There is always one thing that looms over your head whenever you are at that stage of making up your mind, whether it is time to jump into your investing journey or keep going well into it. That would be, when will that next financial crisis occur? Will I lose all my hard-earned money? The time and effort I have placed into structuring my financial future, will I lose that too? It used to be the excuse I told myself at the time, and I believe it was the better to spend your money, spend it all, rather than potentially lose it all on the stock market. At least I would get the goods. Now uh, that I am well into my journey, I will share with you how I approach that exact same situation today and how I personally will approach the next crisis which will inevitably happen. Historically speaking, a financial crisis and recession in the US economy occurs every five years. We have been running without one for the last 10 years. Now, I would say it is about time. A couple of things are important to remember as a young investor is that first and foremost, the US economy and its stock market have always emerged stronger from a serious financial crisis since the beginning of its history. Even through world wars, which I believe are the worst possible events affecting world economies, yet we are now doing better than ever. So probably we will need to revert back to the earliest crisis in 2008 and we will just use a reference uh, the S&P 500 as an, indi as an indicator, sorry, which actually represents the market capitalization of the 500 largest companies in the United States. It is just the reference index telling you the actual temperature of the US stock exchange and the economy. Now, for those of you who were old enough to have lived uh, through that crisis in 2008, you will remember that it was a pretty bad situation. Your investments would have lost uh, probably 35% of their value on average, if not more at that time. But the crash of September 2008 lasted until July 2009, less than a year, and then returned on that same year, 26.4%. Now, the market fully recovered, and we know the story since then. We can even go back to the previous bear market in 2000, 2001, 2002, which also recovered the following year. Slightly more extended this one, but still with a full and stronger recovery. I will understand if you feel that injecting money during these periods would be a serious risk, but I think there is every reason to trust the US economy for the next 100 years. It will always recover and recover stronger. It is a question of trust and patience. During those times, and in the event that no extreme situation occurs in my life as a result of it, such as losing my job or my sources of income, I will be keeping my positions. I will not sell any of my stocks and use all my cash on hands to buy more stocks and simply continue on with my investment strategy regardless. You can then buy great companies for pennies on the dollar, which will give you never seen before returns once the markets have uh, have fully recovered and start generating serious returns for yourself. I do know that such could take three years, but do not be in a hurry to see returns. Rather be grateful that the markets are giving us two to three years to do our shopping. Just stay the course and simply make peace with the fact that your current investments now will lose 30 to 50% of their value at one point of time, but that you will recover them and recover them stronger if you have even increased your positions in your portfolio during those periods. It is inevitable that you will lose value on your current investments to those uh, levels. And if one already knows that this is going to happen, then you have enough time to prepare mentally, financially, and evaluate the risk you are willing to take as of today. 
do you know the difference between the majority of the audience of this podcast and the rest of the world? It is that you are between 18 and 35 years old. We are in the possession of the strongest and most valuable commodity. We have time and we have a lot of it. Please research the history of returns of the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. You will see by yourself and see for yourself and answer that question for me. How much return the S&P 500 would have given you today if you were fortunate enough to have made an investment in 2008. In this case, I will rest my case. I now know without a doubt in my mind my strategy through that that type of periods and what can be characterized as well as the best possible case scenario for an investor and the worst case scenario for a day trader. I am about now to just pack up my luggage and go on another business trip. I have five hours drive through the rice paddy fields. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I wish you a fantastic day ahead. Thank you for listening to the podcast and I really hope that it brings you some additional support on your own journey towards financial freedom. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you stay updated with new episodes. It would mean a lot to me if you follow me on Instagram at the New Investor Podcast. And in the meantime, stay invested, be patient and keep playing the long term game. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.